Logan saying, we want it to be us. Gambit have something to say about that. So here we go, in-game then, the Super Hot crew taking on Gambit. What is this one going to end up like? If you look down some of the starting items there, for Edward in particular, a little bit different coming out, got himself a Ruby Crystal and Mana Pot there right from the start. One thing I'm interested in is level 1 here. We have been seeing a lot more level 1 action since the 4.4 patch. Will we see that here again today? The possibility is there, but I don't feel like either of these teams have uh, you know, significantly superior level ones. You've got some some CC from Rise and Pantheon, for example. You have similar CC from Renekton and Zen Zhao. But to commit to a, a a level or skill path that way is a little different. You don't have a Leona. You don't have a Morgana. Your traditional invades. What we have been seeing those when the invades happen, it is delayed. They start at 140, 145, making use of that late vision thanks to the Trinket Wards coming up at two minutes, and there's still time for Gambit to invade. But it doesn't look like anything's going to be happening. Seems to be the same defensive start as always. Yeah, a big line across the entire map from both sides of this game. And looking like we are going to be seeing red buff start for Diamond. Did this route yesterday, playing that Sin Shao. And also at the other side of the map, Pantheon waiting for Impaler by his blue buff. Are they going to step forward from this one? We see that Edward is in that corner brush there, down on the bottom side of the river, and he's probably just going to get a ward on the ramp by the Wraiths. Yeah, I'm going to make sure there's no delayed invades here from the Super Hot crew as well. The one thing I want to keep my eyes on when uh, these minions do make it to lane is how this duo is going to work out. Edward is going to get spotted out, but very good positioning from Genja just to get a little additional poke. Now, this is key for Super Hot crew. They need to make use of the range of Caitlyn and Karma against Genja and Edward on Lucian and Sona. If they get a lot of early damage and root Sona before she hits level 2 or level 3 and starts getting sustain and poke back, that's when Super Haku can take advantage of those squishy opponents. Interestingly enough, when I mentioned the jungle paths for both teams, they switched over and Xin Zhao did his red buff and Pantheon came down and did his, uh, no, other way around. Pantheon did the red and Xin Zhao did the blue. So they're going to be crossing over once again, see where they come back into it. And there we see the stats from Mr. Rawls as Caitlyn in weak number one. 9-3-2 we finished that one. Good game actually coming out from despite actually losing out in the end. We'll see how this one turns out here today. Mr. Rawls always has fantastic numbers in almost all of the games, whether they're winning or losing. And it, it's a testament to his laning ability and his positioning in team fights. Now, we do see that Mixer is trying to put Poke down, but he is actually half of his mana pool down whereas Edward still has two-thirds of his mana pool. So, advantage already to Gambit. They've sustained through those first uh, you know, initial poke trades, and if Mixer keeps spamming out those inner flames from his Q, he's not going to have enough mana to poke and shield, and that's when Gambit can start going aggressive. Super Hot Crew have been a traditionally aggressive bottom lane. There's no way around that one, as once again Edward getting some poke down onto Mr. Riles. Mixer just shielded him up there to get out of any potential aggro from Edward and Genja. And Edward, if anyone knows how to play Sona, it's him. He's probably played more Sona than anything else in these uh, last two seasons of the L uh, LCS throughout Europe and North America, where he was briefly last season. His Impaler now is moving up towards his top lane, but he will have Diamond waiting. I think Diamond is aware of this because he's delaying this. They're not going on Mima yet. Impaler's going to be in so much trouble when they jump on him. Oh, he does dive in there, but there is a turnaround. Impaler going low, gets knocked up. First blood comes in for Gambit. Can they get themselves a second one? Diamond with that red buff on. Mima going very low. He does have a flash, uses it very late here. Diamond does have a flash as well, but decides not to go in. Yeah, I think he would have been taken out by the tower. He was on very low HP, decided to hold that flash. Very good play. Diamond Prox not only grabs first blood for his team, but he refreshes those double buffs. And very patient play. Mima was playing defensively in the lane. He didn't put himself in a position where Diamond or Darian could jump on him. And that unfortunately meant that Impaler was the instant target. Selfie prepared himself for a roam, but it didn't actually come. And a little bit of trading back and forth. I think uh, as long as Selfie has mana, he can actually heal himself because he does have that ability on Kale. And we'll see how he continues to uh, uh, scale his champion. So far, doing well in CS. Doing well, 25 to 24. Pretty much bang even in that mid lane. Bottom lane is a little bit of a different story, though. We saw that 
a lot of mana used by Mix are actually sitting very low on mana right now. And when I say very low, almost none. Edward doing constant harassment over onto Mr. Riles, and that leaves a 34 to 20 so CS in lead. We do see Impaler coming up. Edward's basically in a face check straight into him on this one. Use the flash, exhaust is down, but there is a spear to finish things off. Meanwhile, Selfie being pushed in that mid lane. He's actually going to flash and head towards the safety of that bottom lane. Diamond can't catch him, and that will bring us back to 1 1. Yeah, at this point, Diamond's just trying to find him out. We do see that a smart recall allows Selfie to get away, and in that bottom lane, the overextended Genjin Edward, they didn't have a ward in the river. It just allowed Impaler to, after respawning, come straight down and grab himself a kill. So, well played by the Super Haku to at least bounce back from giving up that early first blood. And we'll see how Edward continues to play this lane. He's actually picked up a scrying orb at a very, very early stage in the game. They're not completely obscure, but we do, we do not see them frequently enough to, to say that's normal by any stretch of the imagination. Well, speaking of scrying, we do see the tier there for Mimer in the top lane. He picked that up on his uh, last route home. I know that was terribly cheesy as Darian is going to dive onto him here. This might be a little bit dangerous for Darian. Mimer starts to turn things around. Has he got the damage to fi finish him off? There's the Rune Prison one more time. Here comes the damage. Is it enough? No! One more auto attack would have finished him off. Darian walks back to the safety of the tower. And that is Darian with Boots and two Doran's items. Mimer burned through most of his mana pool to make that happen, but it ended up being worthwhile. He's got a CS advantage already, even though he was forced out of lane, and that is part Partially why uh, so many people are saying Rise is a counter to Renekton. You can hold him in place, you have good damage from your overload, especially in these early stages of the game. And what we are seeing from Mimer that is different from yesterday's Rise by Overpower is he got himself a very early tier. We actually had some heated discussions <laughs> regarding the build path that Rises can take. And I think if you're going for an aggressive damage build, you go tier first, and now we're going to see the Rod of Ages next. It's just going to allow him to get a maxed out 750 mana around about that 25 minute mark, which is pretty standard. That's a considerable lead in terms of CS in that top lane now as well, as you can see him just racking them up with his ultimate running. And that leaves him at 44 CS with 1,000 gold to head home and spend. And We'll see if he goes directly on from that one. Yep, just moving back to the safety of his tower before doing so. This bottom lane, as we look back down there, double Doran's blade here for Genja. On the other side, Vamp Scepter actually coming out for Mr. Oz. Wants that sustain to match up with the heals of Edward Sona. It's not only a matter of wanting, he needs it as well. Yeah. Thanks to the fact that Edward is going to be able to keep Genja topped up, it forces Mr. Oz's build path somewhat. What we do see, though, is that Mixer is still sticking with that Spell Thief line. He has upgraded it to the Frost Bank, getting some pretty good pokes so far, has already earned a total of 250 additional gold. Darren is going to find Impaler, or vice versa. Ah, Mimer's coming around the corner here. This might not be the fight that Darren's looking for, and he just wanted to put down a bit of harassment there onto Impaler. He got that off, had to use his Dominus, actually, and then slices and dices back off to victory. Meanwhile, we do see that blue buff coming over here for Alex Itch for the first time in the game. Darian needs to be a little bit careful, knowing that Dominus is not available. If Mimer manages to catch him a little bit out of position where Darian's at about 50% HP, I think Mimer's actually going to have enough damage with that tier and the mana stacking up to get a kill on Renekton. So we'll see how that matchup plays out. For the time being, Mr. Rawls, he was a little bit down on CS. He has managed to at least close that gap and remain even with Genja. But we'll see how this lane continues to play out. Mixer on this Karma hasn't really gained Super Hawk Crew control of the lane. But again, it is something we've seen so often. You poke down Sona and Lucian and they just heal back through it. Now it's the poke back on towards Genja and instant heals. However, when you start to run out of mana, that's when it becomes a problem in this lane for Edward. And we'll see if the Super Hawk Crew try and force anything back. Mixer himself is running fairly low on mana at this point as the wards do go down and, well, down, taken down even, as that one is put in and they had the auto attacks to deal with that one. Mr. Al starting to push things up though there and I have to give him the credit of coming back in this lane. That's going to be another good pilt over Peacemaker. This could be interesting though. We see Impaler coming around. He is currently level 5. Will be hitting 6 here very shortly to jump in. If Genja sticks around, this is definite tower dive potential. He does have Flash and Barrier, however, and we do see the Grand Skyfall, so Impaler is trying to get in range. Impaler is one of the few Pantheons that is not afraid to tower dive at level 6 instantly. We'll just see how he continues to play it out. We also see Mixer does have some mana available, so he's also got the ability to give that shield speed boost to his team members to either get in or get out of the fight early. Look at the gold. It's 
actually in favour of the Super Hot crew right now with Mr. Rawls finally taking the lead over Genja and that top lane that's going so well for Mimer's Impaler and Diamond gonna just meet up here inside of the jungle. We can see that Selfie is starting to come around, is level 8 now so has intervention. Diamond knows that he's not gonna get any more action from that little one-on-one. -on -one. It may open up Dragon though. If the rest of Gambit respond, they do have enough damage and they know Impaler's low, but they gotta be careful for the Grand Skyfall. You did see that Dam Diamond move towards the pit and then immediately backed away. Just before that little engage, we did see Impaler forced to clear out that last little lizard on the red buff, and that was thanks to the invade by Diamond earlier on. He stole the red buff away from Super Hot Crew. So Gambit, they're staying even on gold, but generally Diamond has just been a little bit more mobile around the map. He's stolen a few more camps, and he's been getting in Super Hot Crew's face. We'll see where Impaler uses that first Grand Skyfall, because there's kill potential for him, plus any of his other lanes. Alex does seem to have selfie. We'll see how aggressive he goes in. He's gonna push in there, auto attacks, there is a shockwave used, Selfie gonna go pretty low, Diamond's off to the side, intervention has been used, but as he wears out, Diamond dives in there, Command Protect will keep him safe from the tower, well they didn't have the damage to finish Selfie. Flash for jungler, for flash for mid laner, Selfie decided to use the intervention after all of the damage, he was trying to hold on to it as greedy as possible. You tend to see those interventions used to block the damage from Shockwave. Nevertheless, it didn't end up costing him too much. Impaler does have Flash. I don't think he's going to go for a steal. Gambit are going to secure this dragon uncontested. Smited off there in the end by Diamond, and that is the first dragon of the game going over to Gambit Gaming. 15,500 gold to 14,500. So that takes away the lead that the Super Hot crew had built up for themselves. But Mr. Riles, who, as we said, been a fantastic AD carry so far, despite the fact that his team have struggled in especially this second half of the season. He is now 10 CS in the lead. BF Sword added in to his uh, vamp scepter for Amelia. So we need to see how Mr. Riles is going to deal with the renekton Zinzao combo. The, the difficulty for Gambit is going to be finding the target they want to kill. Because if they try to jump on Mr. Rawls, they're going to allow Ryze, Pantheon, and Kale to just go past the Gambit frontline and wreck Alex and Genja. But if Gambit decides to try and focus Ryze and uh, uh, Kale and Pantheon down, who are going to get quite tanky and have that intervention, it's going to allow Mr. Rawls to focus the back line. So we really need to see how Gambit are going to deal with focusing their targets and catching Super Hot Crew out. Because I think the longer this game goes, the more I prefer Super Hot Crew's composition. They haven't lost any towers. Yes, they're 900 gold down thanks to the Dragon, but I think Ryze is going to outscale Renekton. Kale is going to eventually do offer more to your team thanks to her splash damage, thanks to the intervention than what Orianna will, and it's a lot less likely to mess up. You can mess up a Shockwave. It's much harder to mess up an intervention. Much harder, not impossible. Yeah, not <laughs> impossible. We've uh, seen some people die in the chat. Yeah, in the chat. <laughs> Let's just say that. Uh, but Alex continues to lead the CS on that lane. No kills, no assists between them. And you see that Alex now with that Athene's on Holy Grail is starting to do some good damage onto Selfie. But are they going to roam in? Here comes the man drop and cancel. Uh, decided against it. 10 second cooldown. He's going to have that available in a moment or two. Selfie was moving out of the lane and Selfie had no mana. So I can only imagine Impaler was going for it now. Impaler fitting off a little more than he can chew. I think Darian may be a bit preemptive on that Dominus. The one thing I do want to touch on as far as the items are concerned is that Selfie actually opted to go for Berserker's Greaves as his boot upgrade as opposed to the Sorcerer's Shoes. So he really wants to get more auto attacks down. He's got that Stinger already sitting in his inventory going to be working towards Nash's Tooth. And Diamond once again, he's positioning himself for the Red Buff Invade. I actually think he's a bit early because he left that little lizard and it took him a long time to clean the camp out. So we'll see if Diamond can get in there to steal it. He may just collapse in onto this bottom lane now. He's being pushed up by Genja and Edward, but that poke from Karma already starting to sting here. Already Edward down there to half of his health as well, but in the end Diamond is still waiting for this one. Alex is starting to roam down a little bit maybe as well. He's currently at the Wraith camp and they are going to start to move it. Yeah, they're going to go for the Christian Mist! Right. Mist makes it going down to less than half HP. Can they finish him off now? Diamond actually going low as well. Mr. Rawls trying to come back on this one. Edward is super low. There's a pilt over. Mr. Rawls flash. Ace in the hole going to be blocked by Genja. They should be able to walk away. No one else coming in. 
Well done. Grand Skyfall is still available for Impaler and he's moving towards the lane. He's coming in on Genja. Oh, can Genja escape from this one? He's going to get landed onto. There is a stun coming in as well. Does use his barrier though. So manages to get away Gambit. They whiffed the Chris, 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 as I called it in that team fight. Crescendo did not connect with anybody in Super Hot Crew. Thanks to them not being stunned and locked up, it meant that Diamond and Genja couldn't stick to a single target. So a counter gank by Impaler comes out. It's only going to secure them this tower, assuming the minions are enough. Yep, there's another wave streaming in behind. So advantage to Super Hot Crew. They take down the first tower of the game and the gold. We heard from Froggen in our last interview after our last match that Super Hot Crew in scrims right now are looking so, so very good. And if they can bring that here to this game against Gambit, they have a very realistic chance of picking up a win. And so far, hard to really argue with that one. This is a very strong looking Super Hot Crew team. One thing I want to point out though, look at Mima and Darian CS now. Yeah, we'll see how this works out for him because at the, this point in time, that early game advantage that I told you about regarding Gambit's composition with Renekton and Zin Zhao and having that uh, Lucian and Sona against Kate and Karma, we've got past that point. All of a sudden, Super Hot Crew have got damage. Super Hot Crew are looking scary. With Catalyst and 400 mana on that tier, uh, tier of the Goddess from Mima, he is already looking to be a pretty scary rise. Diamond is on a bit of invade. He's going to get collapsed on. Oh, this is bad news for him. Does get slowed there. Rise going to come in. Does flash, but straight into the face of Bell Selfie. And there is the kill. Mixer actually picking that one up in the end. Super Hot Crew called that one so well. Very well coordinated. After grabbing the bottom tower, Super Hot Crew did not hesitate to send their AD carrying support to the top lane. Selfie's in trouble. Oh, is he going to be able to survive? He does have intervention. And there it is used perfectly. We'll be able to just walk on away from that damage from Alex. So the reason that Super Hot Crew were able to get that kill onto Diamond is after they got the bottom lane tower, they did the right thing with a Caitlyn AD carry. They sent her to the top lane because they want to get another tower, then move to the middle lane. Once they get all the towers down, then they're going to look to get some dragon control. As it stands, Alex and Edward have kept Selfie at bay, kept him away from the minion wave, and it looks like Mima is going to be defending the bottom lane. He's got some decent wave clear, thanks to his ultimate, and because any spell cast reduces the rest of his cooldowns by a second, he's always going to have his ultimate available. It is a very effective tool for him. And the Super Hot Crew are pushing for tower number two here, moving in towards Darian's outer turret in that top lane as he just slices and dices in. A lot of poke damage coming onto him, and while he's going to be forced away from that one, also the minions were taken out, which is going to delay that move for the Super Hot Crew. What's even nicer for the Super Hot Crew, because Darian had built to deal with Mima with that Spirit, uh, spirit Visage, he's not going to be tanky enough against Mr. Ross. Unfortunately, Super Hot Crew, with their duo lane top, they've given up Dragon Control for now in favor of trying to get that tower. I do believe they will be trading objectives, which should still keep Super Hot Crew ahead in total gold. Because the gold is still so close, it means when Super Hot Crew are comfortable to fight for a dragon, they're not going to be so far behind, it's an unrealistic fight. And now they're moving now towards the mid lane. Only one outer turret is left standing here for Gambit and an entire Super Hot Crew team outside of Mima, who's making sure that Gambit don't get one back on them in this bottom lane. Will be converging into that mid lane. And actually, Alexic is recalling there. Are they going to make the push for it? Impaler, Selfie now moving down towards this bottom lane here. Comes a man drop in towards Genji. Does have enough mana just to dash away to safety. That was a bit anticlimactic. Genji had just enough mana to get that relentless pursuit. Managed to get out of range of Pantheon. Pantheon, unfortunately, not landing the stun. Thanks to that little move, and because Mr. Rolls and Mixer actually moved to the mid lane, it has allowed Darian to get onto the turret and to even out that top lane turret. So now Gambit, with this little strategic move, they grab themselves an advantage. We did see for a brief moment Mr. Rolls and Mixer in the mid lane, and what I'm expecting Super Hot Crew to do with their composition, get that last outer turret, then get some wards in and around the red or the blue buff for Gambit, and try to contest a fight. If you can keep Gambit in a nice enclosed space, the splash damage from Rise, as well as Kale, as well as Karma, is going to do a lot of work. The thing they need to be very afraid and very scared of is not to all get hit by a shockwave, though. So we'll see who's going to come out the better in those tight corridor battles. I'm going to have to keep a hold of these towers because if they want to fight for that next dragon, losing towers is only going to make that task a lot harder for them when it does come around the next time. They've already started clearing out wards. The sweeper lens with both missiles 
and Mixer, and there is another blue buff for Selfie, who does have his Nashes 2 now complete. As you mentioned, though, they are going to rotate the AD carry and support towards this mid lane. Gambit trying to hold on to that one, though, having both Orianna and Lucian, and in fact, Sona there now as well. One of the things that works into Super Hot Crew's favor as far as the upcoming ba Dragon Battles go is they have their bottom outer turret. So as long as Mima is just planting himself there, pitching a tent, roasting some s'mores, killing some minions, they're always going to be able to fall back to that little defensive posture. And if Gambit wants to pick a fight afterwards, they have no turret to fall back to in that bottom lane. So it's a little bit more risky for Gambit as far as the map presence and the control in that area of the map is concerned. Alex is going roaming towards the top lane and seeing if he could find Selfie who had already started to move back towards the mid lane. That's going to give them a 3 and 2 advantage for just a little while here but both Diamond and Alex will be around that area should they be called in. We can see down in the bottom side Mimas started to actually move up here. Renekton is going to catch him inside of the river and I feel like they're both just going to go down and keep farming that bot lane. Yeah, Darren could have had an opportunity to go aggressive there. You actually seen Mima using his rune prison on a minion. So it meant that Darren had a couple of seconds to jump in and get some harass. It didn't work out. He's actually the one taking the damage. Yeah, I don't think he's going to have enough to kill him here though, but Mima will chase in and here comes Selfie from the side. Darian going to get slowed, going to get rune prisoned up. He's going to be able to slice and die. Flashes away. The man drops coming in. Edward and Alex hit a boat there as well. They're going on towards Edward. Have they got the damage? Great crescendo. Shockwave though didn't do the damage because of that intervention from Selfie. Great timing. That was brilliant timing from Selfie. Because Impaler didn't take that burst, and because of the damage they have applied to Gambit, they are going to be able to apply pressure on this mid turret. We'll see how many wards they've placed in the jungle. Look at that incredible amount of vision that Super Hot Crew have just earned from using that ultimate, from using that play. Super Hot Crew will also be able to get this tower down unless Gambit pull off a monumental defense, and I don't think they can hold it. No, they can't. This is five versus two in a best case. Genja did start to move in from his jungle there as well, but the Super Hot Crew able to get the better of them. That leaves them 3 1 ahead in turrets. And look at the gold. Still in favor of Gamut, but it's very, very close. And thanks to the mobility that Super Hot Crew have with Karma, with Kale, with uh, the, the Grand Skyfall from Pantheon, it, it allows Super Hot Crew more opportunities to make plays. Now with all of the vision they have in the bottom half of the map, the moment Gambit seem a little overextended or a little out of place, or there's a buff that Super Hot Crew wants to take, they have the, the, the tools available in their kit to react very quickly. Gambit does not have that uh, opportunity. They don't have the ability to do that. So Gambit needs to be on point. They need to be at the right place at the right time. Otherwise, they're going to start losing dragons, and blues, etc. Some more items coming in as well. So let's uh, go through them while we seem to have time. Mima, on your screen, his tier is up to about 650 mana now. So getting close to getting that finished off. Also have the Rod of Ages picked up as his uh, first major item. Across the board, though, let's have a look at the AD carries. Bloodthirster's zeal is done for Caitlyn. On the other side, Genja kind of split between the both. Got his zeal with that BF sword, got the crit cloak as well. So looking like he's moving up to his infinity edge first. Yeah, at the very least, there's no Bilgewater Cutlass just yet. So we may not be seeing the Eye Edge, uh, Blade of the Rune King, Zephyr. But I think as far as the items go, there's a definite advantage on the side of Super Hot Crew. Until about a second ago when Alex did actually complete his death gap. He now has a very large amount of damage. If we look at the bottom lane, we do see Darren's going to kick Cole Pine Paler. Once again, the stun does come down, but have they got the damage here to finish off? Darian has his ultimate running. There's still a lot of damage coming in. There's another room prison to keep him locked up, but Diamond and Edward did come down. Darian was able to stay safe. Yeah, Spirit Visage plus Sunfire Cape. There's a lot of damage that they need to get through. One of the core items on Rise, after getting your Rod of Edges in your tier, is to grab yourself a Void Staff. The amount of spells that you throw out, you need to burn through some of that magic resistance. And there's not a massive amount on the side of Gambit right now, but there will be as this game continues to progress on when you're dealing with basically three AP champions. Mixer grabbed himself that haunting guy, so he's also going to be hurting a little bit. Now, Mime is trying to make his way to this fight. Super Hot Crew do not want to get jumped on until he arrives or until he can flank. And I think Super Hot Crew are doing a good job at stalling Gambit. The buff is up, and they're just trying to push them backwards. Now Mima's going to get close. A fight can break out for Super Hot Crew. They're going to jump on Alex if Mima comes from behind. This is the fight for Dragon that we expected. Gambit are going to move into Dragon Pit, and Darian really started that off on with his, super, uh, with his uh, Sunfire Cape. Super Hot Crew do have Mima, as you said, 
separated from the team. So there's four on the bottom side, Mimer on the top. It's going to be a pincer move if they go for a fight. Always a risk. If Super Hot Crew group up, there is going to be a flash engage from Zin Zhao. Now they see that's just poke. I don't think the full fight's going to happen. Gambit are looking for a three or a four man shockwave. Dragon still has not been secured. It keeps resetting in the pit. And look at Mimer. He's been pushed away by Genja. So this is a four and four for the time being. Versus four, but those two are rejoining the fight. Mixer getting some good poke off from the side, and it's clear that both teams want this dragon. It would separate them or really bring the Super Hot Crew back into a lead. Not a massive one, but for Gambit, will put them nicely ahead. Mr. Rawls has already backed off here. Super Hot Crew could have played this dance a little bit longer. The minion wave is pushing in the top, uh, in top lane in their favor, and in the bottom lane. Selfie, he's going into basically a five-man gambit while Mr. Rawls is pushing in a turret. Super Hot Crew are in a little bit of trouble if they get caught, but they're not. They peel for the tower. Darian actually using his ultimate from this one. They're gonna take down the dragon. Let's see if they can keep a hold of that tower. Edward taking a big blast out of Mixer. They start to move across the side. That tower is gonna be falling here. What are the Super Hot Crew gonna do? Do they want to fight? this one pantheons on the top side it looks like it's gambit that don't want to fight that would have been the perfect time for super hot crew to jump in but they didn't instead they forced gambit the long way around super hot crew got the inner turret and they've got a little bit of a minion wave not feeling brave enough to go for the in him turret but i think a little bit messy but super hot crew come away grabbing themselves the overall advantage the tower is down gambit have only secured one turret this game if Gambit had been a little quicker to jump on Super Hard Crew, that could have been so, so different. But Super Hard Crew play it a little bit loose, and they get away clean. And three out of three dragons for Gambit. They're going to go in towards Darian. He's pretty tanky by this point. We saw it earlier that the two of them couldn't finish him off, despite being able to lock him up multiple times with that Rune Prison and the stun out of Pantheon. And instead, they decide to back off. Probably got a decent amount of gold to be spending here, to be honest. And in fact, there is 2,700 there on the AD carry. Everyone else over 1,000. And that actually could have been a big reason as to why Super Hot Crew didn't fight. If they were sitting on that much bankroll, they didn't want to pick a battle when even though the gold is even, it was unspent gold on Super Hot Crew. So technically, they would have been down. Now, once again, Darren somewhat overextended. Mime is going to try to zone him out. He does have flash and slice of dice. Mime is farming. I just feel like you're never going to kill Darian. Uh, I think Darian has the same thing in his mind as well. He just walked away to the tribush and Mima didn't even bother coming in there. He wanted the farm more than anything other than that. So, let's have a look down some more items. Mr. Rawls now got his static ship added into that Bloodthirst and the workings of that last Whisper as well. I have no idea how Gambit are going to deal with this Rise and Kale combo because we're at the 30 minute mark. The tier is fully stacked for, Ma for Mima, so he's going to be trying to uh, upgrade that to the Seraphs, get the shield up there as well. We see Mixer is continuing down the damage route. He's got Leandri's Torment built up, and I actually think that's a very smart... Oh, so close. I actually think that's a very smart item against a Renekton and a Zin Zhao, because if Super Hot Crew get into a poke situation, Karma is their primary long-range poke. You throw down those Qs, and because it's percentage HP against two champions that build a lot of HP, it's going to allow you to try uh, chunk them for 10, 20% of the HP before fights begin. But Mixer needs to be on point. He cannot afford to miss those inner flames. This turret looking to be defended by the Super Hot Crew. It's very, very low in that middle lane. In fact, they've brought their entire team up towards this mid lane to try and force Gambit to back away from that one. Darian actually is recalling in the bottom lane, actually, as I say that, he decides, you know what, I'm going to stick around. Rise was there. Might as well have myself a free wave of minions. And we'll see how Gamma continue to play this game out. They have slowly pulled themselves a small gold lead ahead. In general, they have more CS in all of their lanes. This tower is incredibly low in the mid lane as well. Super Hard Crew, yes, they are going to continue to scale. Rise is going to continue to grow uh, longer than that of Renekton. Kale's going to continue to grow and uh, offer different power to that of Orianna. But they need to find a way to make it stick. Super Hard Crew are trying to do what Fnatic did yesterday. They avoided the fight, they avoided the Dragon Pit, they went for the inner turret. It worked in that situation, but I don't know if they're going to be able to recreate that situation. So we'll see how they play it out. Diamond is thinking about a tower dive, but it's going to be difficult against a Rise. Well, not even the tower dive in this scenario. It's like, okay, we force Rise away from that one, or we kill him. One of those two is going to happen for us. In this scenario, they got themselves a tower. That puts them... Not quite 3,000, more like 2,000 gold in the lead of this one. They're still 4-2 behind in turrets. And if you leveled up the gold from the turrets here, Gambit would be far and away ahead in this one because of those three dragons. Yeah, that's the truth. And I think Gambit are trying to now 
get asserts a map dominance, asserts a map pressure. If Super Hot Crew had gone into that dragon fight about five or six minutes ago with that uh, the, the gold they had in their back pocket spent, they may have wanted to force the fight because a big fight now is going to probably cost an inhibitor. I think with you know the, the bottom lane being to the inner turret for Super Hot Crew and being to the inhibitor turret for Gambit, if you lose a team fight badly. We're at the point in the game where it will cost you a Baron or an Inhib very, very quickly. There's so much damage on both sides. And with Selfie having completed his death cap, he's also going for a bursty KO. He's going to be throwing that Q out and just trying to melt the squishy Lucian or Sona. We'll see if he can find someone. Diamond's the next target. Death push and a little bit awkward. Well, he's got the stun down. There is a shockwave only hitting Impaler. Diamond uses his ultimate to push them away, but they've caught him. That's a good crescendo. Here comes the Cullen from the back. They dive towards Mima. He's flashed away, but they could romp home with a few kills here. Mima actually using his Zerath shield there to keep him alive for a little while. Impaler will fall despite the intervention, and that is three for nothing in favor of Gambit and surely the Baron. Super Hot Crew tried to force a play where they shouldn't have. They jumped onto Diamond, who was pretty tanky at that point, got the makings of the Randuans, and it was an awkward engage to begin with. Gambit now not stopping. They've grabbed themselves a few kills. They're on the Baron. Mr. Rolls and Selfie are trying to poke as best they can, but this is risky. It's 5v2 at the end of the day. They're going in to try to get the Baron. Gen just got so much damage. All the damage back from Selfie, though, and he's got the splash damage in their head. We're going to go low. Actually survives, and they managed to get the Baron and take down Selfie. Yeah, that's the problem. When you're trying to engage 2v5, there is hard CC from multiple members of Gambit. From a game that was 2,000 gold difference and Super Hot Crew had the ability to control the game, they forced a team fight. Now we missed the beginning of this fight where Diamond was jumped on. Impaler was forced out before anything could happen. And I actually think Diamond had a very, very good crescent sweep with that Zenzai ultimate. It knocked Super Hot Crew away. And the moment Super Hot Crew start retreating, you've got a movement speed increase from Orianna, movement speed increase from Sona, you've got movement speed increase from Lucian. They just ran Super Hot Crew down. Now Gambit gonna get more kills and the dragon. Uh, actually, they will get themselves the first dragon here, the Super Hot Crew, but it's gonna cost them. Impaler is gonna fall there. And I suppose it is a kill for a dragon, which in the grand scheme is going to be worth it for them. That's their first one of the game, but they've fallen so far behind. Yeah, I think Gambit could probably get that middle turret as well. They have decided to recall, actually. There's very low HP on that, if memory serves correctly. Yeah, that's a breath of fresh air. will knock that mid turret down, and I'm pretty sure the minions should be able to close this one out. Back line, there we go. So, Dragon, Baron, Tower, multiple kills. And with Genja going for a GA after his Static Shiv and Infinity Edge, this is a traditional AD carry build, which is something we don't necessarily associate with Genja. It's working very, very well. He melted through the members of Super Hot Crew. And when he grabs himself from armor penetration as well, if you look down the items on, on Super Hot Crew, there's not a lot of armor. They haven't started building up those defensive stats against a very armor-heavy composition of Gambit. So we'll see how uh, Gambit decides to itemize and take advantage of their current weakness in the Super Hot Crew. Funnily enough, the Zephyr wouldn't even be that bad against this team with all the CC that they've got in there. Uh, well, we'll see if that comes later on for Genja. Right now, he's probably feeling very confident with that Guardian Angel in there. He's got that Infinity Edge, the Static Shiv and Gambit with the Baron buff running, with Elixirs running as well there for Alex Itch. They're going to dive straight towards his tower. Darian has got all the health in the world. He's got himself a Warmox now as well. Actually, Genji getting blasted, but he will just quickly dodge out of that one. And there is tower number four for Gambit. The one team fight that happens at the 30 minute mark is such a massive swing in power because both teams are even for so long. So they accrue multiple map objectives. And this is meaning Super Hot Crew, have, they've got a lot of damage on Genji, which was good. They've defended the tower, but they didn't have enough hard CC to lock him down and kill him through his GA. So Gambit, just back away. They'll be happy with an inner turret. And they've now got an 8,000 gold lead after evening up those turret kills. Get some money, Gen, from that Baron going. And Actually, there's a big way for someone to farm on that top lane here as well for Gambit. That will, in fact, be Genju who's headed up that way. He's already got 329 minions to his name. Probably just one more at that point than Alex Itch. Similar skills and assists for them as well. Alex Itch, 104. Genju, 103. And you see that he's all regen back up. Interesting where Genju goes next in his build. He's got another 1,900 gold to spend when he does head off home in a second. Another item coming in there, Void Staff for Alex Hitch that we talked about earlier. Yeah, his shockwaves have not been particularly impressive so far. We caught three of them on stream, two of them against Selfie. One of them was in that bottom lane. 
and it didn't really work out. In the jungle, he also only managed to catch Taylor. But now that Super Haku are forced to defend in a very enclosed space, like on these inhibitor steps, it's actually easier for Alex to make that ability land. We do see the rest of the game, but they're just face tanking this turret, not even afraid. It's gonna go down soon. Yeah, look, it's Darien that goes in there. They threw literally everything they've got in, but Diamond now gonna take some damage as well. Selfie himself bought a Void Staff when he last went home in there, but they're not able to keep that inhibitor turret in. Gambit slowly but surely working their way through the base. Yeah, at this point in time, Gambit are gonna play this one by the numbers. Roll around the map, take all of the turrets. Genja, that's a lot of damage from that ace in the hole. It still hits particularly hard. He also has no built-in lifesteal right now. I'll just take a quick look at his character sheet. He is just relying on his 6% from Runes and Mastery. So, no Bloodthirster, no Blood of the Rune King. I think that's probably going to be the next item he wants to work. Well, Last Whisper, then Bloodthirster. Rely on Sona heals to keep you topped off. And I wondered how Gambit were going to make plays on this map, and the answer is Brute Force. They just face tank that turret with Sin Zhao and uh, Renekton, knock them away when Super Haku got close, and grab the objective. Selfie trying to push things back out here for the Super Hot Crew. Get himself some more farm along the way as well. He's way past the halfway mark of the river. Just making sure that that one gets pushed. Oh, let's not forget there's no inner turret on that bottom lane for Gambit. That was taken down much earlier on in the game by the Super Hot Crew. But if you look at the gold, it's starting to approach a 10,000 gold. It's such a hard position to come back against any team, but I think against Gambit more than others. Yeah, and, and also the psychological effect of that jungle fight that Super Hot Crew started, that cost them this massive disadvantage right now. If Super Hot Crew can turtle for a couple of minutes longer and make this gold lead a little bit less relevant, their champions are going to be able to scale and deal with Gambit. However, they cannot afford to make mistakes. If you look at the side of Gambit, they have four sweeping lenses on their side, some of them are upgraded. And if you look at Super Hot Crew's vision, it is very, very good for the time being. So as long as Super Hot Crew can maintain some vision superiority in their jungle, it'll give them the tools available to engage on Gambit and make the right decisions. But Gambit needs to make better use of those sweepers. Now they're pushing deep and they're pushing far, they want to deny the wards. The Genja build update here. Actually did pick himself up a Stinger, a Vamp Scepter, and that Alacrity upgrade for his Berserker Greaves as well. And right now Gambit are closing in on towards that in, in the inner turret on the bottom lane, but Super Hot Crew actually forcing them away. Gonna try and put some damage back, but the rest of Gambit are actually there. Diamond was the one that got locked up in the front. In the end, they're doing damage from both the top and the bottom side. Gambit losing quite a lot of health. They're going in on towards Alex Itchy's use the barrier in there. Diamond has to flash away as well, and that wasn't half bad. In fact, the Super Hot Crew, they're going to keep going for this one. The man drop comes in. Edward puts down a great two-man crescendo, but Darian get caught out. Can they finish him off? He's gone so, so very low from that one. The Super Hot Crew continue to chase through, but are able to, no, not able to catch Gambit, who sped themselves up and got out. The inner turret for Gambit is now going to be at risk, as Super Hot Crew are still relatively healthy. That was the strength of the Super Hot Crew composition I talked about earlier in the game. In the jungle, in those tight spaces, oh. Oh, that's a flash! Diving straight in there, Selfie not messing around. Nukes down, Alex Tish now, Genji getting caught out. Does use his barrier, still has that GA available for him. Turret goes down here for the Super Hot Crew. They're gonna look for more. Baron is live as well to turn back around onto here if the Super Hot Crew want to. They can get the inhibitor and the Baron if they peel back. They've gotta make sure they don't get collapsed on by Gambit though. And that is a very, very big turnaround. Don't know if you can hear Mixer yelling nice in the background, because I sure as hell did. And he is incredibly excited. That was a very good play. That was the risk that Gambit had. Going around to Dragon from this one. I mean, Alex Hitch is not up for another 30 seconds. You possibly would argue that the Baron's going to be the target that you have to go for there, but the Super Hot Crew are happy with the gold that they've got from that. They're second out of five dragons this game they're all gonna they're recall gonna be so fast what are gambit gonna do here they've got to be fast they're all recalling and gambit can just walk straight in there gambit can rush baron down with the amount of damage that we see on the side of genja he should be able to shred through this baron very very quickly i'm looking at home guard boots there are four five pairs of home guard boots on the side of super hot crew they are motoring out of the base to try and contest this objective right now just before the fight breaks out, there is still not a massive amount of armor across all the members of Super Hot Crew. So for once, I feel that the Stinger is not a terrible item because he doesn't need the Last Whisper armor penetration just yet. 
Oh, Impaler gonna face check the death rush. Oh, are they gonna be able to get away from this one? There's a crescendo only going on to Minor, but it might be enough. He uses the shield. The intervention did keep him alive there. And now the Super Hot Crew try and back away. Selfie, he's put himself all alone on the top side of the map. He won't be able to walk away from this. Darian actually flashing in for the stun. That's 5v4. Baron is the next target for Gambit. All of that comes from the fact that Super Hot Crew did not try to rush Baron down. They gave a position on the Baron, which allowed Gambit to be in the better spot to defend that engage. Now, Super Hot Crew, they haven't given up yet. They still want to poke. There's still good AoE. Baron's down to 3,000, and here they come. That is a lot of damage coming into the Baron. He's going to be stopped here. There's a shockwave. He goes on to Impaler, but that's actually a two for one in favor of the Super Hot Crew. Flash away on the back. Alex Hitch is going to go down. It's a double kill. They're going to get the Baron. Or are they? The Cully comes through. Mixer is blocking it. The Baron is shredding through them, and there it is. Baron finished off. But look at the base, look at the base on Gambit, the super minions pushing through onto those Nexus turrets. And that's not the only turrets, in the top lane and the bottom lane, there are massive minion waves on both of the turrets of Gambit. The super hot crew have made that 10,000 gold lead a tiny 2,000 that is negated by the Baron buff stats. In the pit, Gambit were on the Baron, they were trying to focus it down, and it was only Diamond that really peeled away from the dragon to try and jump onto uh, Impaler. The shockwave came down and it didn't really matter. Rise, Selfie, and Mr. Old were destroying Gambit in the background. They lost their top inner turret, they almost lost the inhibitor turret, and the Nexus turret took a whole bunch of damage. Absolutely crazy game here from this one. You have to give it to the Super Hot Crew, showing some real character in this one. As you said, building up, getting stronger as every single team fight now comes around. And it looks like they may be pushing for even more here, taking away everything from that Gambit jungle. They're the ones with the Baron buff on. They're the ones with the Super Minions pushing through and doing the damage to those Nexus turrets. They might be able to just push Gambit away from this inhibitor turret that's so very low. On the condition, Super Hot Crew do not put themselves out of position. Their comp is going to be able to deal with the comp of Gambit. They have got tankiness, survivability, mobility, and more importantly, damage. So as long as they don't get caught out in, you know, a poor position, they should be able to close this game out. With this inhibitor turret being so low, that's going to be two auto attacks from Mr. Rawls that will be able to take it out. If uh, uh, Selfie gets on there with all of the ability behind the head right now, that's also going to go down incredibly quickly. So Gambit are in full defense mode. We'll see if they can hold off. I wonder who's going to be the one to step forward in this one. Who dares step forward in towards this Gambit team that could throw so much damage your way as well. Caitlyn Trap's going to be stood on there. Mimer peek forward. Here come the minions once again. Mr. Rawls is going to brave it. And there is the inhibitor turret being taken. They're going to go on towards Darian. Decent damage done to him. Will force Gambit back away. That is now an open inhibitor. Now I think Super Hot Crew can either continue sieging this bottom lane or roll around to the top lane. There are still super minions pushing through the mid. It looks like they're going to play the siege game. Mima still has his ultimate available. Ryze can just run in there. But very importantly, Gen just got their GA up. They're trying to poke down Darian, who is a very important member of the front line here for Gambit. Gold is now even there. Caught Genja! They caught Genja, but he still has that Guardian Angel. The Crescendo comes through. Colleen comes in as well, but Darian being blown to pieces. They turn around. Diamond is going to fall. That's 5v4 for one minute here. Diamond not coming up for another 60 seconds. Gambit going back to heal off. The Super Hot Crew are going to take down the second inhibitor. They can move straight towards that top tower. Yeah, there's nothing stopping them right now. They are still ahead on kills and gold. And thanks to their composition scaling up into this heavy, heavy late game, there's very little Gambit can do. Gambit need to try and find a pick onto Mr. Rawls or Mima very, very quickly. Get them away and then deal with the rest of the team, but it's not the case. Super Hot Crew with Baron Buff still regening him, they're now sieging the top turrets. Pushing in onto that one, and we've seen that Mr. Rawls not scared to step a little further forward and get those auto attacks in. The damage from Mixer is pretty strong. He's got a Void Staff in there as well with that Karma and that Haunting Guys, or I should actually say, uh, even more than that, the Leandris from earlier on. Is do step forward. The calling used by Genja. That will get rid of the minions for now. So right now, Super Hot Crew have decided to back away. They do have a fair amount of gold, around 2,000 on multiple members to spend. And they do have super minions pushing for at least the next two and a half, three minutes worth of gameplay. I think this is the smart call. They can restock their wards. They can upgrade their items. Lich Bane now completed on the side of self. He's grabbed himself in Negatron Cloak to deal with the magic damage of Orianna as well. With all of the items Super Hot Crew have now picked up, 
they have to just siege their top turret, wait for the super minions to get to the base of uh, Gambit, and then take the objective. Gambit have to fight a, a, a battle on multiple fronts, and that just puts Yuvaku in such a strong position. Big Sir has now <laughs> picked up a needlessly large rod as well, so that is your support doing quite a lot of damage, let's just say that. Yeah, that's a, a lot of magic damage coming out, and then you've got all of the physical damage from Caitlyn and Pantheon. It's very difficult to uh, prioritize one of those because there's just damage sources from all of the Super Hot crew. Gambit took too long to try to take advantage of uh, Super Hot Crew's comp. They didn't punish any of the lanes. They didn't shut down Rise. They didn't shut down Kale. And they sure as hell didn't shut down Caitlyn. So Super Hot Crew came out of the laning phase completely even. Even with the mistake, they've held out long enough for their champions to just outscale that of Gambit's and be in this great, great position. Ward's coming over and swiftly dealt with as well as Mr. Arles will step forward. Diamond there, we thrashed that by self in the turret. It's down to less than half HP. There is a step forward by Edward. Mime are going to get a little bit caught out. Darian's right in the middle of them, but there's no one else there. They're not there to help out Darian. He goes low, but he does walk away. The culling from the backside. The inhibitor turret does go down. That's the final one. They're going to jump towards Genja. There's a crescendo coming in. Sin Zhao knocks them all away. Alex Hitch goes low as well. Not quite finished off. Command protect comes out, the crocodile went back to heal, and he's now back into the mix. Those Nexus turrets, they're pretty low already. Mr. Ross gonna tank up the first one. That's one Nexus turret down for the super hot crew. They're gonna grab the third inhibitor on the armies with them. Now Diamond re-engages. Taylor is gonna be pushed down, but Darian being shredded lower and lower. Diamond is on towards Mr. Ross, but he'll net out of that one. Can they get any more kills here? They've got super minions coming in every single lane now. Alex Hitch goes low. Edward has taken down Selfie. Diamond falls low, but they jump on towards Impaler, he flashes away, and they walk off. While all of that was going on, the Super Minions were bashing down on that last standing Nexus turret. It has not been hit just yet, as I was saying. <laughs> and the Super Hot crew, they needed the Minions with them. They were trying to stall it out, and they were trying to buy time for Super Minions to get into the base. Unfortunately, Gambit did a good enough job to force the Minion wave backwards. That meant that Super Hot crew stuck around, tried to stall, tried to uh, bait out the fight, without having the minions hitting the Nexus turrets. Now, with double super minions in each of the waves, for the next minute, to, uh, it's just ended thanks to bottom uh, inhibitor respawning, Super Hawk crew are going to have to focus that objective. Buy, get Selfie back in the mix, and grab that last inhibitor. Crazy, crazy game here between Gambit and the Super Hawk crew. And 20 seconds, less than, in fact, until Baron does come back into play. And they're already in position from this one. Mr. Riles is going to collect his red buff before heading off to that top side of the river to join the rest of his team. Four seconds, well look at Gamit's position. They've had to spend so much time in the base defending against those super minion pushers that they're not gonna be in an ideal scenario. Although you could argue that the super hot crew themselves not exactly there just yet, but they start to move. They can't lose this Baron or have a bad fight here though. No, there's nothing, super hot crew cannot get caught up, but I don't think Gambit are going to be able to catch them up. Because of the position that Super Hot Crew has, Gambit will need to try steal. You have flashes to go over the wall, you have champions that can jump, but Super Hot Crew wisely are backing out. They don't want to get caught by a multi-man crescendo and shockwave. Because even at this stage, it could be devastating for them. Well, with the inhibitors being respawned, I think Super Hot Crew should play the siege game. They've won all of the last team fights from the bottom lane about 15 minutes ago. And if they just get onto those objectives, they're winning with their current champions. Don't make the mistake of allowing Gambit to catch you out of position or catch you with those multi-target abilities. Dragon going to selfie. He will just solo that one down, no problem for him. And head to join the rest of his team. Actually moving towards blue buff, which is on Alexich. So no bluff to, uh, blue, blah, blue buff to steal away for the super hot crew. Gambit kind of hovering halfway down the lane here. They know they can't go all the way back, but they also have to stay close enough to that Baron in case it should be moved on to again by the Super Hot Crew. And they're going to move in here as a group and try and get some more wards down. Three of them there, as Diamond is just going to check around. Spots a ward off to the side, but Mixer and Mimer were already in position to stop him clearing that out. Yeah, if there's anything Super Hot Crew should be doing more of at this stage of the game is finding ways to get deeper vision. They don't have the best uh, wards sitting in Gambit's side of the jungle. They've only got three sweeping lenses, and I think only one of them is upgraded. So at this point in time, the vision game is still in favor of Gambit. The fact that Gambit 
needs uh, to defend Baron is a positive for Super Haku. They can pull Gambit towards them, and if they have the correct ring of vision, they may be able to peel. Use that Grand Skyfall, come in from behind, create some disruption, intervention Pantheon, and pick a fight. But as it stands, Super Haku, they're erring on the side of caution. They're playing this one slower, they don't want to give up the lead that they've got. Two open inhibitors that have respawned. The third one will be coming up here shortly as well. That gives a brief respite for Gambit. Especially Alex Itch, who spent all his time in that top lane, just forcing the waves to go further and further back. Super Haku are playing this one very safe, though. You have to say, not taking any big chances around Baron, not really going for any kind of big push. They're looking for Gambit to move out and make a mistake. Yeah, I still think Super Haku need more wards. I, if you look at this mini-map, there are three or four, no, three wards in total on the Gambit side of the map from the Super Haku crew. Without having that vision, when you've got so much map control, when Gambit are down to only one Nexus turret, it's very difficult to force their hand. It's difficult to make a play. And you see Super Hot Crew, they're not committing. They don't want to commit to Baron. They didn't even have Selfie with them. And it's just this tentative feeling gameplay. If they had vision to work with, they could have made much better decisions. They could have peeled for fights, jumped over the wall, etc. As it stands, it's just going to be the waiting game. See who gets out of position first. Super Hot Crew have... Actually, no one going back there. It was Gamut who sent Edward back home, and the Super Hot crew have decided, you know what, we're going to kick off Baron once again, and this time it looks like they may be committed to it. It's down to less than half it. Edward's not there. Edward nowhere to be seen, but the rest of his team might have bought him enough time. Darian took a bit of a blast, but he is so tanky that it doesn't particularly matter to them. They've delayed it long enough. Edward is back. Yeah, so Baron went down to 3,000 health, Super Hot crew peeled. They didn't want to run the risk of a burst combo from that Xin Zhao plus Orianna, either hitting them or stealing Baron. Now, Baron is going to regenerate back to max health, and we're in a five on three situation. Selfie's pushing the top lane. Mimer's caught in the mid lane. Gambit are going for the inhibitor, and I think they're going to get it. They're going to push straight down here. The mass recall is coming in from the Super Hot crew, where they look like they want to take down this inhibitor. I can't see that they're going to be able to stop this one from happening. They've got minions coming in as well. Skyfall. There is a Grand Skyfall, but who are they going to pick? Diamond, Darian, neither of them really ideal. There's the jump back in the crescendo, completely whipped. Darian going low. Diamond has the flash. Shockwave will only pull Impaler, and there is a flash on Selfie. But has he gone too deep? Ult is used left and right on this one. Mima gonna go low. Darian still very low. There's his Guardian Angel gonna be popped. He might have to be a sacrificial lamb here. No, he comes up with about 3,000 HP still. But Mr. Rawls finishes off. Genja flashes away. Mr. Rawls running a rampage in there. He finally gets slowed down by Alex. But Gambit have to retreat. The inhibitors have to be the target here for the Super Hot crew. Impaler did such a good job of re-engaging. He flashes, jumps on with the W, throws down his Randian's Omen and immediately runs away. That slow is what allowed Super Hot crew to get the kill. Alex, one more hit! He doesn't go down. Mr. Rolls is on the mid inhibitor and I think Super Hot crew may push the finish. Gonna look to finish this one. The Super Tank of Gambit is no longer in the game for 40 more seconds. There's the Cullin. It's gonna do good damage. Impaler's gone low. Genja steps forward. Can't quite finish it off though. The minion streaming back out of the base here. Gambit have still got 30 seconds to hold on. If this is gonna stay, I'll become a five versus five. Mimer taking so much damage there from Diamond and Gambit. They're somehow holding on to this. They are defending their Nexus, but they are losing a second inhibitor. As it stands, Mr. Roll still has a lot of HP. The inhibitor did not go down. That's about 150 HP as Super Hot crew are forced away. They set their sights on the Nexus turret. They didn't manage to pick it up because there's still a lot of damage from Gambit. And that culling from Genja just destroyed Selfie's HP bar. That meant that Super Hot crew had to peel away. They should be able to get this Baron because they've still got an immense amount of damage between their champions. It will be secured and that's going to allow them to siege. Absolutely crazy stuff. Super Hot crew have just taken the lead with the gold here by that pickup of the Baron. 82.6. 82.6, that's all even now as they start clearing out lanes. 10-9 in kills, but 10-5 in turrets. There's not a lot left of Gambit space. One inhibitor down, two inhibitors open. Only one Nexus turret is left standing. There's not a lot that Gambit can do to deal with this damage that Super Hot Crew are putting out. As long as Super Hot Crew, once again, just group up, they're even getting through the HP and the tankiness of Darien and Diamond. And because of the shorter range of Lucian, he's actually at too much risk if he tries to get in there and tries to get the squishier targets. Lucian has to focus Rise and Kale. 
And because they can just melt through Gambit's tanks quicker than Gambit can melt through Super Hot Crews, it's forcing Gambit to be in the retreat in every single one of these fights. We see in terms of itemization, a six item Mr. Rawls, which is a little bit more traditional. He sold his boots, picked up that Zephyr. There is still no armor penetration from Genjin. This could be one last fight. They try to look for it, Selfie was top. He's gonna continue split pushing. Gambit didn't get the fight they were looking for. Selfie up top, Gambit, what are they gonna do? They actually speed each other up and they're going straight down the middle. Are they gonna try and push through for this one? Selfie is recalling. They're gonna push these super minions back, whatever, and that is still a good play from Gambit. Grand Skyfall is still available, so Gambit are maintaining control of the one lane where there are super minions. It means they're gonna have more time. Because if you look at the top and the bottom, it's actually gonna be pushing a little bit in favor of Gambit towards the Super Hot Crew. So the one wave that could push them into their base has been dealt with. Now, Gambit, they're gonna jump on Super Hot Crew from the side. There are Banshee Veils, there's Guardian Angels. If they don't kill Mr. Rolls quickly, I don't know if Gambit can do this. They're going in, and Joe, this could be so scary. They are behind the Super Hot Crew. There is Impaler's Banshee's Veil pop. Gambit decides to try and back away. Darian gonna get locked up, but he doesn't take too much damage. Diamond, now on the, on the other hand, did go to down to about half. Edward gonna get caught out here against Mimer. Has he got the damage? No, Edward getting that command protect. He stays alive, but Gambit have to recall here. They could try and push through the Super Hot Crew. Yeah, the rest of Super Hot Crew, I think they should go for an inhibitor. They've got a lot of damage, they can get it quickly, but there are multiple Home Guard boots on the side of Gambit. You can see them dashing across the map. They're gonna try to defend the objective as best they can. Inhibitor hasn't regenerated its HP just yet in Super Hot Crew. They're gonna get it. We'll see if another fight's gonna break out. Good calling coming out there. The Banshee's Veils completely removed from the Super Hot Crew. Will they go for a fight? Gambit are being pushed heavily. Edward taking another blast as the Command Protect comes in to keep him alive. That inhibitor on the bottom is the last one standing here. The easy target for the Super Hot Crew. Flash Crescendo is still available and I, I'm not sure if I'd use the word easy target knowing that there's that CC. Super Hot Crew decide they want to go for the Nexus turret instead. Forcing Gambit's head. Diamond's coming from behind. Oh, they've gone on towards Impaler. He's surely going to go down. Intervention is used on him. Have they got the damage to finish off after? There is a Crescendo. He didn't hit anyone. Diamond still at the front, Mixer goes low, but it's once again Mr. Rao doing all the damage. Genja gonna get flashed on, Ace in the hole will pop the Banshee's Veil, uh, sorry, the Guardian Angel, and Genja now gonna be jumped on and finished off. That is surely the game. Two men down here for Gambit. Darian comes tearing out the base once again. Alex and Diamond both there as well. And in fact, Diamond goes straight on towards Mima. Have they got the damage to finish off? Yes, they have. A shutdown coming in, and now Mixer has to try and run away, but on the top side, the rest of the Super Hot Crew went for the Nexus and won the game. What an absolute beast of a match.